Hi guys and welcome to the video. Thanks for coming to check it out. I am about to set up my June month in my bullet journal for the theme of Wales. And a lot of you voted for this one and I was glad you did because I have always wanted to explore Wales and would love to go there one day. So let's see what I discover on my journey. So the first thing I knew about Wales was all the beautiful scenery and landscapes. So I knew that I wanted to do a nice landscape for the cover page, for the opening um, spread into this month. So I started my research off with finding, you know, what's famous about Wales and what are the best places to go and see. And the first thing that I discovered that was quite interesting is that 20% of the country's landmass is actually national park. So that means there's three huge national parks that cover Wales. And those three are Pembrokeshire Coast, Brecon Beacons National Park and the Snowdonia National Park. So I found this beautiful picture of on the edge of Snowdonia National Park, which is actually a little tea room, or so like a tiny cottage. And when I saw this photo, I just actually couldn't go past it. So it's not actually the Snowdonia National Park itself, but you can see it in the background and it's got that feeling of the national park and its beauty. But I just saw this cottage and it had these autumnal leaves and they were bright red and all this color in the, uh, in the bushes and the trees behind that I honestly just couldn't go past it. So this tea rooms is called Te Hunti Bont, which I am probably butchering. It means beyond the bridge. Now, I actually love trying to pronounce things in other languages. I think it's quite fun to do, um, but I cannot even get myself to repeat the words properly. The, the way they form sounds is completely different to English. So I'm gonna pronounce things the way I would try to read them. So this is to Huntibont Tea Rooms and it is like this beautiful medieval cottage surrounded by this lush scenery. <laughs> and as I say the word lush, it actually brings me to the only Welsh person I've ever known is a girl that I lived with in London for a little while. And um, I've recently got in touch with her again. So shout out to you, Hayley. Um, yeah, whenever I think of you and Wales, I always think of the lush scenery because it's a word that you used to say a lot. Um, and that's exactly what I pictured when I wanted to do Wales. So I think I chose well for the cover. So I chose this beautiful tea cottage with the bridge going over the um, River Conwy. So it just looked like an absolute fairy tale and definitely a place I would love to check out when I go to Wales one day. Now, as for the girl this month, I have put her very small up on the bridge because she is taking a photo of a wild horse or a wild pony that's down in the foreground. Now, this is an element that I added into the scene because I read that wild ponies are abundant in the, not in the Snowdonia National Park, but in the other one, the Brecon Beacons National Park. So just the thought of frolicking across the scenery in, in this national park and coming across wild ponies would just be amazing. So I thought I would try and combine a couple of elements from the national parks together and put them in this scene here. Now I love the color of this um, artwork. I really tried to get that shine of sunshine hitting underneath the bridge and across on the um, ivy on the house as well. I used watercolor mainly and then I just had to add a little bit more detail. So I used my Prismacolor pencils for that. So once that piece was done, I had done this on a watercolor paper and I've just taped it down to make sure it doesn't buckle. And then I'm peeling up the tape and getting ready to cut it up, which is a scary moment for some. Uh, like I mentioned last month, this doesn't, doesn't phase me at all because I do enjoy having my bullet journal be sort of like an art journal. So it's nice to have pieces that I've really put everything into. Um, it helps me to look back and see, you know, gaining in skills and just the memory of like exploring that particular country. So now I'm cutting it up in half and sticking it into the journal. And then I also just wanted to make those dividers on the right hand side again, because I found those really helpful the last couple of months. So I've added in, I've used circle shaped ones this time and just put that at the top and then cut down around that right hand side. It cut off a little bit of more of the artwork than I would have hoped for, um, but I don't think it's spoiled it in any way. It's not, none of the important features are gone. Um, so yeah, and then I've also got this nice cute little round corner cutter. So I've just cut the corner as well, which makes it feel a little bit more finished to me and it doesn't spike me when I try and turn the page um, and then for the title of this month I've just put it in a circular shape in gold pen 
down on the bottom right hand side and just labeled it in June. A little bit of dots here and there just to sort of finish it off. Kind of reminds me of a wine ring. I don't know how that's relevant. Maybe it's more of a tea ring, you know, for the tea rooms. Um, but yeah, it just gives me a nice, nice little feel. And then just adding some little sparkles of gold around the page to finish it off really. And then this is the final result of the cover page for June. Okay, and now we're moving on to the next page, which is where I draw up my calendar for the month. And I usually like to include the national animal on this page, but I'm actually going to include the national animal later in the setup. So on this one, I've included one of the cutest little doggy breeds called the Welsh Corgi. Now this Corgi, there is actually two types. There's the Pembroke Welsh Corgi and the Cardigan Welsh Corgi. <laughs> Now you may have seen corgis before, the Pembroke corgi, because the queen has actually owned over 30 of these little pooches over the years. Um, so it's really gained in popularity because of that. So the most popular type of corgi is the Pembroke corgi. But here's an interesting fact I came across. Um, the queen has owned over 30, but they're either Pembrokes or a corgi mixed with a German Dachshund, which then becomes a crossbreed known as, wait for it, a Dorgy which is obviously the coolest breed of dog you could have, right? Anyway, so I thought he would look very cute on this calendar page. And I have decided to blend this page with another element of Wales, which is the Royal Mint. So I thought there was a tie there with the queen as well, seeing as she owns corgis, she's also on the coins. So I've drawn her on one of the coins from the UK in the 50p, um, 50 pence coin. Now the Royal Mint makes over 5 billion coins a year for 60 countries and the Mint actually originally was in London but it got moved to Wales because it needed more space because it just kept growing. So in the 1960s it moved from London to Lantresant in Wales even though the Mint itself has actually been around for 1100 years. So I'm trying to keep this page relatively simple and just use my black fine liner for the calendar and then I have a nice Faber-Castell marker in the color cinnamon. I used this in my last month's um, journal setup as well but it was just a perfect color for the hair on the corgi so I thought I would tie that in and make that pretty much the sole color on the page so just keeping it quite a basic color palette and then I added a little bit of silver and some gray for the coin and just some features around the page. For the title of the calendar, I didn't use June as a large font this time. I just used the letter J and I tried to do it in a Celtic style font. And then I thought I was finished, but I realized that my little Corgi doggy doesn't have a name. So I decided to draw her in a little collar and her name is officially now June. Now to color the Corgi in, I'm still using that cinnamon marker, but I thought I wanted a little bit of extra variation between it. Um, so I'm just using my water brush pen and putting a little bit of the color from the marker onto a ceramic plate and then using a little bit of water to make it almost like a watercolor. Now it dries super fast. So if you do attempt this, just make sure you're, you know, using it sparingly and just doing it in little patches. Um, but yeah, it's basically a really simple way of getting a kind of watercolor effect in your journal without having to get out all your watercolors and you know use a lot of water to try and get the right color. So that's why I've used this on this page just to um, alleviate some of that pressure of extra supplies all the time. Um, and then this page was finito. So for the needs and wants page, I came across a very cute little tradition that is quite famous in Wales, and that is the giving of Welsh love spoons. Now, according to Welsh folklore, these ornate carved spoons were traditionally made from a single piece of wood by young men as a token of their love for their sweethearts. And this is just to show their affection and intentions for their loved one, which I thought was just so precious. And the designs are all really varied. You know, they're not all the same. They're all unique in their own way. But I sort of found a couple that I liked and combined them into one drawing that I could use as the divider for my needs and wants page. So it kind of looks like a Celtic sort of pattern. And then I've got the interlocking love hearts at the top. Um, and yeah, I just thought it was really sweet. So this is what's the centerpiece on this page. 
and figured it worked as a perfect divider between the needs and wants list that I usually create. Now, if you're new to the channel, um, I basically use this spread for keeping my purchases to a minimum and I just write down throughout the month on the needs section what I actually need to buy that month and then on the wants section, things that I would like but I don't necessarily you know, need to have to go and buy that, that day or that week. Um, so it's nice to have a place to put these things and to be honest, I'm barely using a lot of this at the moment because it's helped to curb that spending down and but I still like to have it just in case we, you know, go off the rails and start buying up big. Um, so it's nice to have here as a reminder of things you actually need and things you want. Now for colouring this page, I am using a brown marker from Faber-Castell. It's just like a brush pen and I'm just trying to colour it in I was trying to keep it really basic. I didn't want to have to do a lot of shading. So I thought I would get away with just using the one marker, but it also, it was making it a little bit flat. So then I thought I'd leave some blank spaces where the highlights were, but in the end it just looked, it just looked wrong. So I had to bring out my pencils to try and smooth it out to make it look a little bit more like a wooden spoon. Um, at the moment it was just sort of looking, you know, like a, badly colored spoon and I didn't want that um, reminding me and annoying me throughout the month. So I did bring in the pencils afterwards to add a bit of extra depth. I also added a little ribbon that just went through the top of the spoon, really just to add another piece of decorativeness, decoration to this page. Um, and then just colored that in a pinkish tone to match with the other side of the page, which is the meal planner. So the meal planner, I usually focus on the national dish of the country, um, but unfortunately a lot of national dishes seem to be like a stew type thing and the Welsh is no different there. They actually have a dish called cowl, um, but because the stews are just, I just don't think they're very nice to draw. It just wouldn't translate in art. So I decided to choose a couple of the other um, dishes that I found interesting from Wales. So I ended up doing three separate illustrations of Welsh rabbit, which is kind of like a fancy grilled cheese. So it's a cheese on toast kind of um, dish, but is, you know, very flavorful and famous throughout pretty much anywhere you will get Welsh rabbit, but it'll be slightly different in each place and kind of unique. So it sounds sounds very nice. I love a bit of cheese on toast myself. So that's definitely something I would eat, um, even though the name rabbit scared me because I thought it may have been rabbit, but it is not. It is just cheese on toast, so it's all, it's all good. And then the next one in the middle is a thing known as barabrith, which is a uniquely flavored kind of fruit bread. Um, a fruit cake, sorry. And it will be found any place you go to in Wales. It is one of those items that will be on every menu. And it's just something that you can't leave Wales without trying. Um, so, I, so I've read. So that will definitely be on the bucket list of things to eat when I go to Wales one day. And then the final illustration that I have put on this page is actually the leek. Now the leek is a national emblem of Wales and the exact reason of it is kind of hard to figure out. But from what I read mostly it is because back in the 6th century, St. David ordered his soldiers to wear leeks into battle. And this was to help differentiate the soldiers between, you know, their opposition. And then in the 14th century, um, Welsh archers decked themselves out in green and white leek themed uniforms. So they've been a, an emblem of, well, of Wales for a long time and seemed a pretty important feature of Wales. So I wanted to get it into the setup somehow. So a food spread seemed the first perfect place to put them. Moving on to the next spread, and this one is called my mind map page. Now this is where I uh, like to keep a record of things that come to mind throughout the month that don't have a specific place in other parts of my bullet journal. So if you're new to the channel, I use this mind map page as my brain dump area. Um, and on this page, I always like to feature a well-known woman from the country of origin that we're looking at. and. This one was hands down very easy to find because I knew Catherine Zeta-Jones was from Wales initially. So um, I was really excited to draw her. She's been one of my favorite actresses um, since I can remember. 
and I honestly think she is one of the most beautiful women on the planet like she is just gorgeous and it was nice to read about her um, charitable side as well I looked into her background and so she's born in Swansea in Wales and obviously started acting very young and always wanted to do it we're probably all quite familiar with her roles on in movies um, a couple of my favorites were Entrapment, um, Chicago and Intolerable Cruelty and of course The Mask of Zorro. Um, so yeah, I always loved her movies that she was in and so it was nice to have a little research into her background. And she's actually really charitable. She's working with a lot of um, charities to help um, child abuse awareness in Wales and support Swansea's Longfields Day Centre for the Disabled. She makes lots of donations and auctioned off her um, outfits from The Mask of Zorro to help AIDS patients in Africa. Um, and just a lot of, lot of charities that um, she can use her stature and finances to help fund and you know provide a little bit of support for the charities out there. So I thought that was really nice. And yeah, what a great lady to showcase in my mind map spread. Now when finding a reference image to work from, I wanted to work from something of her now rather than one of her iconic images from back in the day. Um, mainly because I really respect that um, as of late she's come out to announce that she has been diagnosed with bipolar and depression and I think for a woman who's in that kind of limelight it would be a very hard thing to do so and it's such a real world problem it is you know very prevalent in society today so it was nice to sort of see how she deals with it and how she has been so strong and brave in coming out with that so I wanted to showcase her strength of character now and so that's why I've chosen to go for a more modern reflection of her um, the reason she came out with those things is because she went through some heartbreak with Michael Douglas being diagnosed with tongue cancer um, and these are all things I had no idea about before you start looking into the life of a celebrity you just you know you they're just real people trying to deal with real life situations all the time and it's just you forget about that sometimes I think so yeah this is my props to Catherine Zeta-Jones um, by putting her in this spread and I also found an image that had um, some small flower earrings on and I thought I would swap those out for some bright daffodils um, which is the national flower of Wales and the flowers meaning which I thought was perfect for this is actually symbolizing rebirth and new beginnings so what better way to um, show that of her strength in a flower form and then I had drawn her using my Prismacolored pencils and some markers for her hair and the flowers and then I felt I wanted a little bit more color but I didn't want to do any more coloring so lately I've been loving using my washi tapes as the fabric on the spread um, or sometimes just the background feature but for this one I used her top or her dress as washi tape and then did a hint of that down the border on the right hand side and I love 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 how this came out I think it's the pop of that yellow mixed with that lilac um, color this is my favorite washi tape at the moment um, it's from the washi tape shop I'll leave a link down below if you're interested um, but I love this this color so much and yeah I think it really works with the spread and gives me that soft peaceful feeling but also a courage about it um, yeah and then I'm just adding a little bit of gold that I like to do I like to add a little bit of sparkle sometimes on my pages and that just really finished the page off And now moving on to my goodliness page, which is where I track my habits daily, um, all the good habits I want to try and achieve throughout the month I put on this page. I recently have been using individual little calendars for them, but I am finding that I am not crossing off my you know daily achievements on them because it just kind of looks a bit intimidating so I'm actually going back to how I used to do them which is on a one stretch of line and then I'll just color in each dot for the days that I achieve that particular habit um, so hopefully I will fill it out a little bit more this month um, but for the imagery focus on this page I decided to go for castles 
Now, after exploring quite a few European countries over the last year and a half of doing this research, um, I would never have guessed that Wales is officially the holder of more castles per square mile than any other country in the world. So there's over 600 castles in quite a small area. Um, so wherever you go in Wales, you are bound to come across a castle, which is pretty awesome, I must say. So I thought I would try and focus my drawing on a castle in Wales. And the one I decided to share is the Carefully Castle which is based in the south of Wales in Carefilly and was built in the 13th century and is the largest castle in Wales and the second largest castle in the UK after Windsor Castle. Now I decided to draw this castle with a very unique feature that it's had since 2018 and it's uh, an attraction called the Dragon's Lair and what it is is these massive dragon statues that seem to just come out of the ground at multiple sites around the castle grounds and they just look so impressive. Um, they'd be great to take kids to I think, it would be really really eye-opening to be around um, but yeah I definitely want to go there one day and I thought it was a nice way to tie in the Welsh dragon emblem as well because on the flag of Wales is a red dragon um, so I've colored this dragon in red to symbolize that emblem and so their national animal of Wales is the, the Welsh dragon also known as the red dragon or Idreg Gok and it was kind of tricky to find out the reason for the national emblem being the red dragon. Um, I think it's basically from really, really early on in the fifth century, um, it was decided to symbolize their power and authority after the Romans withdrew from Britain. Um, but yeah, I can't confirm any of that. That's just what I'm reading online. There's probably a lot of folklore and um, history kind of challenges out there as why the dragon is so commonly used in Wales. And to illustrate this one, I wanted to keep it quite simple. So I just used a Pigma Micron in black and then one in red as well. And then it just didn't have enough contrast for me. So of course I started to color it in more. So I thought I would try and keep it simple by using a marker again and just wetting the marker. Um, but the color actually was coming out a little bit pinky, which I wasn't in love with. So then I got my pencils out and this is how it goes in the daily life of Torrin's bullet journal setup. So she tries to keep minimal and never, never works. Um, so I just kept coloring and trying to get some depth in this dragon and I just couldn't keep it. I couldn't keep it simple. So it ended up being, you know, slightly more, um, I guess a realistic style than I was trying to go for. Um, but I like how it turned out in the end. And then I always love to add to that washi tape pop. So I thought the mulch that it's in, like the earth that it's rising up from, I put in like a brown washi tape to try and symbolize that ground. And by having that little pop of gold on there, I think it just made the spread a little bit more interesting and not so flat. So yeah, happy I did that. But yes, one day we will try and pull back on the amount of detail that I go into. <laughs> And now we're on to the final page of this month's setup uh, before I do the weeklies in my next week's video. Um, so the first week, week one of this month is only a six day week um, from the first to the sixth and we start on a Tuesday. I'm saying this out loud because when I was creating this, I was determined to make sure I didn't do an error on the dates of the week. Um, the artwork that I decided to do on this page is the Ponzi Silt Aqueduct um, and the Langolan Canal. And this, this structure just really impressed me. So I'm honestly not even sure if I've seen something like this ever. Um, it's basically a you know very tall bridge that carries a canal across a river. So on top of this, what looks like a bridge is you know water and it carries narrow boats along it. And the 18 arched stone and cast iron structure um, was built in 1805 and it took years to design and build. It's 12 feet or 3.7 meters wide and it's the longest aqueduct in Great Britain and the highest canal aqueduct in the world. So it was a very impressive structure and thing to see. So I just absolutely had to include this in my setup this week. 
I decided to use mainly just marker and some fine liner. And then in the river D below the aqueduct is a couple of little boats. They're little round boats. And these are actually called a coracle. And it's a small, rounded, lightweight boat. Um, and it's traditionally used in Wales. So I thought that would be a cute way to tie that into the setup, just to point out this unusual little boat creation. Um, so I put that in the river down below and then use a little bit of washi tape again. I loved that purple one to, and with the green, it really kind of brought it out. So I used that again to add a little bit of impact to this page and then we were done. So now I will give you a quick flick back through the pages of our setup and this opportunity to say thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned a little something about whales, enjoyed the setup, and um, if you would like to support me further, please subscribe or check out my Patreon if you'd like to see more. I have just released my uh, first studio vlog on there and I'd like to show my appreciation for my latest patrons who are Victoria, Felicia, Donna, Kathy, Erin, Maria, and Misha. Thank you so much for joining the community. And if anyone else would like to um, check it out, I'll leave the link down in the description box. And then please join me next week where I will be doing my weekly spreads and also choosing the three country options for July, which you can help to vote on. So take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.